An Engine Scorned. Written by Richard Jordan. High up in the mountains was a little railway where three little engines worked. Their names were Duke, Stuart, and Falcon. Stuart and Falcon often misbehaved, and so Duke had told them a story about a little engine named Smudger, who had misbehaved so badly that the manager had turned him into a generator. Stuart and Falcon quickly learned to obey the rules, afraid that if so much of a wheel was out of line, that they too would be punished like Smudger. Many years later, Stuart and Falcon, now called Peter Sam and Sir Handel, still thought about the story of Smudger. What they could never discern, however, was what Smudger had done to deserve such a twisted punishment. One day, their curiosity got the better of them, and they asked Duke about it. Duke did not answer right away. He looked nervously from side to side, smiled weakly, and began to change the subject. You're evading our questions, Grandpuff, said Sir Handel. It happened so long ago, Duke said. I don't recall what happened. Ask me about Albert or Tim. So you remember all the other engines on our old line, but not Smudger? argued Peter Sam. Duke frowned. These two scamps were wearing him down. Finally, he relented. There are stories that an old engine loves to tell, but this is one I hoped I would never have to tell again, said Duke gravely. A chill ran up Peter Sam and Sir Handel's boilers. It was long before Manager brought you to the railway. Smudger, who was once called Stanley, came on loan to the railway after another engine was sent away for repairs. He became Smudger for his proclivity to tip over coal wagons, the coal smudging him from smoke box to cap. But it wasn't only coal wagons. Smudger was always in one accident after another. It wasn't that Smudger was clumsy. A clumsy engine would have become more balanced with time. <laughs> no, Smudger loved the thrill of it and the chaos that followed. With every incident, there was punishment. And every time, Smudger felt that his treatment was unfair. He believed that manager was too straight-laced and controlling, which caused Smudger to harbour resentment. It didn't help that manager used me as an example. Why can't you be more like Duke, who is careful and has never had an accident? Peter Sam looked confused. Why didn't manager send Smudger away? There weren't any other engines available. Those were lean times, where money was scarce and the yields were drying up in the mountains. This placed tremendous pressure on manager, and it was better to tolerate Smudger than face closure. As time went on, the pattern continued, and Smudger's resentment grew. Soon, in defiance, Smudger started pushing boundaries. He wasn't satisfied with small-time misdeeds anymore. He wanted to cause vast disruption, things that would shake the railway at the core. Smudger, for instance, would try to keep coupled to his wagons as they were hoisted up the incline, hoping that the winch would wear out. He would overload the sidings with heavy wagons, hoping that the ground would collapse, and would try to clip the water ducts with his running board, which would cut off the water needed for the mining. Eventually, Manager became wise to Smudger's schemes and nothing ever happened. But one day, Smudger was successful. Duke paused impressively. Peter Sam and Sir Handel gulped. What happened, Grandpuff? Sir Handel asked. As I said, these were lean times. 
Frenzied efforts were being made to extract what little was left in the gold mines. The workmen were blasting day and night to search for any remaining specks. Gunpowder was therefore in high demand. We brought wagons upon wagons to the sidings near the mine, but never directly to the portal, in case a wagon was to come loose and roll inside unattended. One day, a group of enthusiasts had chartered a special train to the top station. Smudger had wanted to take the train, but manager said no. You're too reckless, he said. You're sure to have an accident. What would happen to your passengers? Smudger didn't like this. The truth was that he only wanted the prestige of pulling a special train. He didn't care about the passengers at all. When he found out I was to pull the train, he fumed. Listen here, Juki, Smudger snarled. You pull that train and you'll be sorry. Smudger made many empty friends. At the time, I didn't think much of it. But in hindsight, something about the way Smudger said it felt different. Desperate, even. In any case, Smudger sauntered off in a huff as usual. And later that morning, I left with my train without issue. Meanwhile, Smudger was on gunpowder duty at the gold mine. He was in a foul mood from being denied the special train and vowed to pay us out. He was pushing the gunpowder trucks into place when he realised that the points had not been set to the siding. This'll show em! He bellowed and hit the wagons with all his strength. The wagons sped down the line around the bend and toward the mine. The miners yelled and yelled, but it was too late. The wagons surged into the portal, clipping the walls and smashing against the beams, the weight of each wagon driving the next farther and farther down the access tunnel. Fire from the torches set the wagons ablaze. In seconds, the gunpowder exploded, sending a shockwave down the shaft and causing a collapse so loud it could be heard from the middle station. Duke sighed deeply. <sighs> Some workmen suffered only minor scrapes, but many were trapped by the collapse, or worse. Smudger thought it was a great joke. Anyone would think it was just an accident, but Smudger knew exactly what he was doing. Manager was mortified and resolved to put an end to Smudger's antics once and for all. And that's when manager decided to... started Peter Sam. Yes, you know the rest, Duke replied. They tore his wheels from his axles and took away his pistons. They propped him up in the back of the shed and left him there. The young engines grimaced. I can just imagine Smudger sitting and admiring his handiwork as the mine swallowed the brave men inside not caring about the destruction, but reveling in the chaos, content that he had finally triumphed over manager. My only solace is that when Smudger became a generator suddenly without wheels, he could understand the feeling of being trapped, stifled and alone, like those men must have felt in the mine. I can't imagine a more fitting punishment. Sir Handel and Peter Sam were speechless. What happened to him after the railway closed? Asked Sir Handel after some time. Smudger was forgotten. Manager left him behind and didn't fret about it. I didn't think to look for him when I was rescued. But I imagine he's still there to this day. Crushed when the shed caved in. Rotting away still contemplating if any of his foul deeds were worth it in the end. <clears throat> Duke cleared his throat and said no more. <laughs>